Well, there is a new twist in this story tonight. President Obama will deliver a national address on Tuesday. Now, the speech is aimed at public school students across the country as they get started uh, in the school year, most of them, many of them, on Tuesday. Now, the White House says that the speech is meant to encourage kids to stay in school. But here is the part that's been raising some eyebrows. The Department of Education originally offered suggested classroom activities. Uh, they sent out this big document that I have in front of me that is supposed to accomplish Accompany the speech, a sort of lesson plan for the teachers. Now, one of them for pre K through sixth graders advises the teachers at each school who's watching the president uh, that the students, they should tell their students to write letters to themselves about what they can do to help President Obama. Now, this caused uh, some ruffled feathers out there, and it looks like now some changes have been made in this document and the way it is advising teachers. Joining me now is Neil McCluskey. He is associate director of the Center for Educational Freedom for the Cato Institute. Neil, uh, you know, let me just go over some of the background. I want to show people a few full screens that we put together of the original document. You can tell us a little bit about what they changed. Okay, so for pre-K through sixth grade students, these are some of the things. There's a lot of things in this document, but some some of the suggestions for lesson plans. Why it is important? Why it's important that we listen to the president and other elected officials, like the mayor and senators and members of Congress or the governor. Why? Uh, why is that an important thing to do uh, for students from seventh to twelfth grade? Why does President Obama want to speak with us today? How will he inspire us? How will he challenge us? What might he say? Uh, there's also some things in here, activity sheets that uh, you know suggest that people write down the most memorable things in the speech, the notable quotes that they want to hang up on the wall around the classroom is one of the suggestions. Uh, this says they should write letters to themselves about what they can do to help the president and so on and so on. So, Neil, uh, they have now said that this is, that sections of this document are, quote, inartful. What did they change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what they did was, because of the reaction people were having to these documents that were really laying out what teachers they think should do to teach around the speech, uh, the, in, in particular, people were troubled by the, the section that advised you have students write letters to themselves talking about how they're going to help President Obama. That seemed to a lot of people to be saying, well, you know, they're being forced to talk about how they're going to support this president. And they've changed that to say, write letters to yourselves on how you're going to attain your education goals. That was really the big change they made, because the wording they had before really scared a lot of people. And then they also added some nuances where they asked, well, how were you inspired by this? by the speech, what the president said, to talk more about were you inspired or can this inspire right. you to do better in school? You know, it'd be nice if there were things in this document. It's interesting because the sort of nature and tenor of the document, as I read through it, uh, is just sort of assumes that every single person who hears this will be inspired, that everyone will be challenged to be better, and that everyone will mm -hmm. like a lot of the things that are said and will write them down as sort of helpful and inspirational things. Now, you know, there's a lot of things to, that are inspiring about President Obama, and he clearly was a good student, and he knew how to study and, uh, you know, get into Harvard, and, and, and those are things that I think every child would want to learn from. But it, it's the tenor of of this document and the fact that it doesn't allow for any sort of questioning of, you know, do you believe what he said? Does it make sense to you? Nothing along those lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really reads a lot like the, the preparation for a, a long campaign commercial, really, to talk about how does this president inspire you, make you want to do great things. It even says in there that they advise teachers before the speech to read the students about presidents and specifically about President Obama. And it's hard to read that, to see that, and not think this administration with taxpayer money through the Federal Department of Education and in public schools that everyone has to pay taxes for is trying to get students students to talk about how wonderful the current president is. And that, to many people, doesn't, isn't appropriate for school. And what's really troubling is, if you go to a public school and you don't agree with this, and you're paying taxes for that school and your child goes there, you either have to pull them out if you don't want them to see this, or you have to try and undo what you might think is indoctrination when your child gets home, and that's totally inappropriate in a free society, especially for people who have to pay taxes to support these schools. Well, Neil, do you have any sense of, of how, you know, how much outrage there really is out there and whether or not there will be any large numbers of, of children who skip school because uh, their parents have you know, paid close attention to this and don't want to send them? 
Mm -hmm. Well, it's hard to gauge. I mean, based on just what I had written today and what some of my colleagues have written, uh, and this story really only broke today, we've gotten a lot of messages from parents who you know, don't typically contact me for advice on how to deal with their public school, asking how can I make sure that my child's not indoctrinated. And then I think the fact that the Department of Education changed this wording at the end of the day suggests that they had gotten a lot of yeah. negative feedback because these documents could could imply that the Department of Education and the President were trying to do a lot of things that are simply inappropriate in the schools. Yeah, I mean, clearly it had an impact already if they if they changed some of the language of this. You know, one of the things that, that I find striking about this, having uh, children in public school myself, is that the Department of Education, you know, that this is what they're spending all their time doing, coming up with lesson plans for the President's speech. Y you might I think a legitimate question to raise is, is this a good use of the Department of Education's time when there's a lot of other things they might want to focus their time on? Yeah, well, this is one of the, the fundamental dangers that people uh, like myself and others have been warning about the federalization of education and just government control of education is that invariably it is twisted to be used for the best interests of politicians and adults and not students. And even, you know, it's entirely possible the president has great motives with this. He really just wants to inspire kids to do well. Right. But because it's from a political figure, it is politicized and that causes constant conflict in the schools, which we see not not just in this, but everything from how you, whether or not you teach creationism, right. evolution, what t-shirts kids can wear, and on and on and on. It seems like it would have been enough to just say, you know, we're doing this thing on September 8th. We encourage you to watch it, and we'd love for you to, you know, encourage discussion about it in the classroom. Probably would have been enough, right? Yeah, or he could have just done a public service announcement saying, stay in school, work hard, right. and do your homework. All good, all good advice, uh, and there's certainly mm -hmm. a lot of that uh, in, this, in this plan as well. Thank you very much, Neil. Good to talk to you tonight. Thanks for having me on.